Hey guys, welcome back, welcome back, John Megacycle here, an episode in a new series of Startopia. This is one of my hands down absolute favorite real time strategy games. It's got a good amount of micromanagement complexity without really a ton of micromanagement. It's um, it's a little, little confusing to describe. This one was designed and programmed by Muckyfoot and then published by Eidos, E-I-D-O-S, I don't know how to ever pronounce that company's name, so I'm not really going to try. This one's kind of similar to, like, I guess, Sims games, I guess is one of the best ways to do it, or I've just recently done RimWorld, and this is one of those games where you have a lot of aliens or people that you work with called peeps in this game, and you can't really directly control them. Uh, there was a game a long time ago I've been playing more often now, I believe it's called Majesty, and it's the same thing. Um, you have a bunch of people, you give them like orders like, I want to build this structure here, and then depending on how everyone's thinking or how they're feeling will determine how quickly that structure is built, or so on, so on, so forth, so to speak. Um, this is one that I want to kind of step into. It's on Steam right now, and I highly recommend it. I think it's also on Good Old Games. But this is definitely a title, I think, if, it, if it's cheap and you like it, take a gander at what I'm doing, definitely pick this one up. This one's a lot of fun. So what I usually do is I play sandbox mode. I've never played the missions before. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to take this time and go with the missions with you guys, go through the missions with you guys. Whew, I could talk. We're off to a great start. And uh, just see how these things go. A uh, bunch of tutorials. I'm not going to worry about the tutorials. Um, so we're just gonna click. What does this do? Nothing. Oh, I guess you can create your own missions. I guess I had no idea. Uh, the Grulian Workers Party. Here we go. This glistening before you like a jewel is the Grulian Way Station. I welcome you to it. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Val a virtual artificial life form. It is my task and possibly my pleasure to assist you during your time at this way station. Now one thing I'll tell you before this mission really kicks off is this game is full of subtle hints and nuggets of other sci-fi movies or games or whatever. So the AI or the virtual artificial life form is named Val. Not to be confused with Space Odyssey 2001, the AI in there was Hal. So it's already worked first level of dialogue we've already got a hit so I'm already happy so far. The mission assigned to you, if I may be so bold, is as follows. Your employers, the Grulian Workers Party, require you to turn this way station into somewhere the asteroid miners can relax between their arduous shifts. I shall be on hand to aid you of course and I wish you luck, speed, and freedom from stupidity. Hooray! Freedom from stupidity! Nothing will enter or exit the way station without a docking portal. You must build one with the hard plan crate provided. Two crates containing SCSA droids have also been provided to aid you in this task. When you've completed it, vessels will be able to connect with the station and cargoes of goods or people can arrive or leave. It's vital, so you should start its construction immediately. Immediately, I said. Oh, all right, all right. <laughs> Feisty. Let's get the port online. And this is how everything is built within the game. Everything comes in crate form. I think aside from people, obviously. Um, but what you do is you take these plans. These are called hard plans. And you put down... This is just an idea of the schematic. And then we have scuzzers. These are our little workers. And they'll go and they'll take care of litter... Uh, clean up, they'll build, repair structures, they'll do a lot of the working needs we have for our base. Hmm. Your objective is to build a docking portal. Use the hard plan crate provided. I look forward to your construction with great eagerness. Yeah, sarcasm a little heavy with this one. <laughs> okay, port is constructed. All species need to rest sometimes, it's a universal truth. So I suggest you build a berth containing at least five sleeping pods you'll need to use the hard plan crate provided. There will be no sleep until you've done it. Okay. Now, that that port was a static structure, so this one's a berth. This one's customizable, so you can really have this fit any needs that you have based on space constraints. Um, I, I kind of understand I'm giving a little bit of a tutorial here. I'm not going to give, like, a huge tutorial, but at least I want to give you a base idea of how the game works. You set up the structure, 
and then you fill in what's inside. So in this case we have sleeping pods. One, two, three, four, five. Whoops. Uh, yes, except the size. I misclicked there, so let's try one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Let's do something like that. So door and door. Perfect. Now the scuzzers, wherever the heck they are, will come over here and build this. Now we've already paid for it. We paid for the plans, we paid for the blueprint construction, and then the placement. So each of the things have been built, so now it won't deduct any more from my account. The structure will be built depending on the level of scuzzer and how many, and then it'll be functional and start drawing power from the grid. There we go. A lavatron is required. These units sanitize, refresh, and clean anyone entering them. Some races are cleaner than others, but at least with a Lavatron, you're giving them the option to divest themselves of all the germs, goo, and unhygienic horridness that they may be caked in. Again, you'll need to use the hard plan crate. Later on in the game, when you start really working with structures, you can actually build your own structures, and they'll come in this crate form, and that allows you to easily sell it to other traders, other races, anyone you might find out here. Uh, can I squeeze that in? No. kind of want to maximize the amount of space I have. Um, there should be fine. Oh, cool, we got our first, uh, the salt miner. Salt hog? The Gerulian salt hog. These guys are the working class of the universe. You'll find them working in factories, recyclers, that sort of a thing. Another salt hog. Fantastic. Things seem to be going well. My fears that you'd be a disaster appear unfounded. Way station Zeton Setoi imploded a while ago when its supervisor unprimed the flux discharge tunnels and the static megaburst instantly turned the place back into star stuff. Oh, don't worry. The design of that place was nothing like this. Uh, not a business. You must construct a dynamat using the hard plan crate. This will feed the population. At least until it gets much larger. Hard plan? Thank you. I can't... Oh, yes, I can cram it back here. Fantastic. Except... Now, the idea of Startopia is there's been many galactic wars, unsettlement, planet destruction, that sort of thing, and these space stations are really revered and considered havens. So now it's really the combat between myself and if there's any other system administrators, it looks like it's just me. This is where you fight and vie for markets and alien interest and trying to get more people to come to your section of the space station. Your droids are working hard. As I have to say are you. However, you don't need recharging, and they do. A droid recharger is your construction task. Unless you are denser than an embryonic anti-quasar, you'll know by now that you'll need a hard plan crate to do this. No, I had no idea. <laughs> Sarcastic jerk, I like him. Let's just put that right there. So here's litter. So what people will do is they'll buy products, services, goods, and that sort of a thing. And inevitably, they'll just drop trash wherever. The scussers will take care and clean it up like they just did. Or if you have litter bins later on, they'll be able to dump off the trash in there, and that's a whole other thing. Congratulations! Kind of Your progress is certainly impressive. An impartial observer might comment that you have the luck of the roulette playing Decapus of Axis Prime. <laughs> roulette is a gambling structure you build later, but that other stuff is good. Your lack of ineptitude is a blessing, so it's time to open a new segment. This will give you a new area in which to expand. You may congratulate yourself, but not for long. There is much to do. You are aware of how the hard plan crates operate, and you'll need this knowledge to construct a wealth of new units. If I wasn't so cynical, I'd be quite excited at the prospect. <laughs> what a jerk. Okay, let's open up this thing. So now as you can see in the map in the upper left, we've opened up a new segment. These usually cost money. Okay, it's the mission, so we're not allowed to. But in the normal sandbox game mode, or the skirmish style, these just cost 10,000 monies, or energy is the currency here. Um, just really short, energy does everything. Energy powers the structures, it recharges our robots, it allows us to defend ourselves, it produces resources. So um, right now these food mats are producing some sort of a generic foodstuffs made out of energy. And then of course, as people sleep, or as these salt hogs rest, they pay a fee. When they come onto the station, they pay a fee. When they use the Lavatron and the services I provide, they pay a fee. So these guys, this guy's coming on board. 
200E, and that's how the cycle works. We provide services, the customers take the services, the products, what have you, and then that gives us more money, and the cycle continues. Money to buy more services. Supervisor, your lack of ineptitude is a oh, yeah, recycling we already did that. plant is urgently required. Efficiency is everything in space. By recycling, you'll convert waste, almost any waste, back into energy. Four salt hogs are required to work the recycling plant, but more of that later. Your first task is to build it in a useful position. Recycling is great because all this litter and stuff can turn into energy, albeit small amounts, but it's far better than nothing. So I want to maximize on space. I don't want to start eating up the new corridor yet. So let's dump this right here. And then also right-clicking, corridor items. What do we have? Ultra lamp? Okay. Let's add a little bit of light. This, this base is starting to look a little dreary. One, two, looks good there. The power facilities give off their own light for, I mean, almost obvious reasons. But let's do something like this. It's going to warp them in, give a bit of more of a, a nice touch to the place. Scuzzer's building up the recycler. This kind of feels tutorial-ish. I mean, they're taking us through stuff, but we already know all the basics, or I already do, so it's not really as tutorial as a tutorial could be. I guess. <laughs> okay, recycler online. Good. The recycling plant is built, but as I said, you need four salt hogs to operate it. Hire them using the hire menu. Remember that although it pays to get the best, it also costs. Hmm, I must write that down. It's a useful saying. <laughs> so cynical! Okay, this is something that was probably very much come through tutorials, so this is going to be very quick. We have several visitors on our space station. These are the Garulian Salt Hogs. Here, they're broken down into name, skill, dedication, loyalty, cost, and current mood. Skill is, I mean, about what you'd think. Their ability to do their job, how effectively, how quickly, how efficiently. Dedication is how long they're willing to stay at their post. So, we're about to hire a couple of these Salt Hogs. This says, how was their work ethic? Do they work 8 hours a day? Do they work 12 hours a day? Do they work 2 hours a day? There's not really a day-night cycle, but I mean, you kind of get the idea. And then loyalty really is what's their dedication to your company or to your brand. Really what we have is this is our brand logo. This is, this is what banner we hail under. So how long are they willing to work for us for, let's say, lack of compensation? Let's say if we can't pay them. That's a bad example, but it's an example all the same. How long will they stick around after we can't pay them. Like, do they really feel brand loyal, or do they just not care? Now, we can click around and find some really good salt hogs, or back to this menu here, has everyone organized? So I want someone that's proficient, but I don't want top, top hog, I guess. <laughs> uh, but we do want someone that's good on most of these levels. So, let's see, this guy, this guy's good. I'd like to take him up. This guy's a little lopsided, not as much dedication, but more loyalty. So he'll stick with our company for a long time, but he won't work as much. So that's kind of the thing, when you're really starting to figure this out. Uh, more skill means more proficient in their jobs, they get the job done faster. So we may hire one or two really proficient gentlemen. Hello, sir. You has a hire. By hiring them, they get a quick boost of all their ailments or their attributes. So let's see, let's go back to there. See all these moods? So it's either like toiletries, or happy, or hungry, or whatever. By hiring them, we're giving them a real boost. They're really happy to have good employment, and they're happy to work on the space station. You are hired. So that's two. We need four total. So let's get back to the menu. Uh, let's go back to skill. Now, we broke down two of the visitors and hired them. Now they're considered residents. So now it's very important that we keep their desires in check. So let's see. We hired three pretty solid salt hogs. Let's see if we can find a fourth good contender. This guy looks good. Willing to work long hours, dedicated to the brand. You are hired. Perfect, there's four. Now what they'll eventually do is they'll come over to the recycler, and we already see two of them here, and they'll start working. Supervisor, why not help your scuzzer droids by beaming up rubbish and junk and dropping it directly into the recycler? Or is such a menial task below you? <laughs> so cynical! Oh. Uh, I think I took too long explaining things. I think my scuzzers did everything. There's some junk. There's some junk. There's some junk. Okay. Now you see the beam 
beams it into this little mass of matter, antimatter. I don't really know what it is, but this is a good indication of how much power we have. When it's full, as is in the upper left, we have 74,000 energy. That means that the capacity is near full. These things can hold 100,000 energy. Uh, that having been said, when we start spending more energy, this will dwindle down a bit. Excuse me. Uh, what's our next mission here? Supervisor, why not help your SCSA droids by beaming up rubbish and junk and dropping it directly into the recycler? Is there more? Is such oh, yeah, there is. Holy crap, you? I almost completely forgot about this stuff. Okay, can't beam up little fuzzy animals. Now, the scuzzers can have their own priority. You can have them emphasize structure building or litter collection. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do here, but the thing is you can't really directly control anything. Like with these workers, we've hired them, but there's not much else we can tell them to do. They'll come to work and leave work at their own volition. So it's important that we keep them happy, well-fed, well, fed, well uh, bathroomed, I guess. And then any other desires that they have, we make sure we take care of. So what we'll see is a bunch of little icons here, like these guys are tired. So it would be important that we build another berth or similar. So I'm actually going to modify this up a little bit. Let's do something like that. And then that, and then can we do this? Great, three more slumber pods. They get warped in immediately because the structure's already been created, so... Dump off the trash, there we go. A supervisor, I must demand your immediate attention. Some technology crates have arrived and I insist that you open them without further delay. Today reminds me of the Grulian Festival of Grimbus, when a random selection of gifts and low-grade toxins are handed to the youngsters, who either squeal with delight or choke as their ventricles are temporarily paralyzed. That sounds amazing! Okay, tech crates. These are different. These don't open up to anything, but when you right-click them and select them, they add their technology to your um, build queue, build order, build feed. I'm not too sure what the actual name for this is, but this allows me to go through and construct structures or keep things inside. So let's see here. This is my build plan, so this is where this also interacts. So let's see, we have the Birth, the Lavatron, and the Dynamat. So now we can build as many of these as we want. Before, we couldn't build any of them. You can add on, but you can't build a new structure. But now we can. You are busy, and therefore it gives me pleasure to interrupt you, Supervisor. Jerk! Three tasks await your attention. You must construct another Dynamat, a Lavatron, and a Birth. Your population is increasing, and if you neglect these tasks, you could face a mob of hungry, smelly, tired customers. And I wouldn't wish that on you, frankly. Yeah, if I get fired, you don't have a job. <laughs> That's about what that works down to. Okay, yeah, we need we need new facilities. Let's go ahead and stop bleeding gums and get started on that. So I don't want these structures to be right next to each other. We want to spread them out. So we're going to build this new berth over here. At least put it on the other side of the facility. That way we're ensuring good coverage. It'd be a real pain in the butt if people had to run all the way to the other side of the station just to get the same basic services. So there's a new berth. Here's a new dyn mat, dyno mat, and a new lavatron. Great, so that'll also spread out the general population, assuring they're not all clumping over here. So, real simple stuff so far. Let's get another pla uh, ultra lamp or two up. Okay, now this guy, Arona Dahl, let's see how he introduces himself. Who are you? I am familiar with all the way station supervisors from the Grulian worlds through the six voids right out to the Keltian black hole. You must be new. In which case, I am Arona Dahl, most respected of the free traders. Delighted to meet you. Anyway, I'm in this sector offloading some late vintage mucus wine. And as I have a couple of scuzzer droids I don't require, I thought I should give you first refusal. You'd be getting a bargain if you took them. Arona has departed. Oh. Mm, Here he is. I've seen supervisors come and go, but you look like you were doing well here. I remember old Migby Pariah. He looked like a 2D laser copy of himself when that bile worm eventually crawled out. Serves him right, I suppose. Listen, you don't want to buy it. No, I can see you're not into that. And the stuff I have is shockingly strong. Sorry, shouldn't have mentioned it. The salt hogs you previously hired are good workers. 
and in line with your current expansion. It might be an excellent idea to bring the total number of Salt Hog employees up to six. Use your skill, judgment, and instinct to pick those that won't let you down. Okay, so a couple things have happened. We've just been introduced to Arona Dahl. He's one of the most respected free traders, as he mentioned. Uh, the problem is the dialogue took so darn long, I didn't get to see what he was selling. He actually departed, and we kind of ignored him because I wanted to go through what the storyteller had to say, or Val. Now, we need to find some more Salt Hogs. In addition to the idea of us only needing four to run the recycler, our salt hogs aren't going to be running the recycler 24-7. They're going to need breaks. They're going to need to go, you know, go to the bathroom for goodness sake. So it's good that we have a couple of extra salt hogs on hand to ensure that we're working to 100% efficiency. Flaffy Gander Yonks. That sounds like a name I can get behind. Oh, he's sleeping. All right. Or she, I suppose. Um, this, okay, they are sleeping as well. Most of the alien races in this game don't have a particular gender, so it's, you know, I kind of just use he as a, almost a loose term rather than uh, saying he's a guy. Uh, what are your stats? What are your stats, good man? You are hired. Skill, dedication, loyalty, good across the board, I like that. Uh, you have no loyalty. That's not, that's not happy. So this icon means he's broke. He has no money. This top number right here, I don't know how well you can see it, shows how much money he has on hand. He's got nothing. So he's going to be leaving the station because he can't do anything because absolutely everything requires money or energy. I'm probably also using the word money loosely as well. Okay. I'm getting bored waiting for that guy. You, on the other hand... Hired, hired. It seems that you're either a competent supervisor or you're lucky. Either way, your station is a success and you will not now suffer the fate of one supervisor many years ago. His name, I recall, was Migby Pariah. <laughs> what happened to him? Oh, he had a bile worm implanted in his central eye. When it finally crawled out of his toe, it was nine meters long. The Grulian culture can be cruel, but it's also rather beautiful, don't you agree? By the way, make sure all your visitors have adequate facilities. Ugh. Oh, what a story. <laughs> it's kind of cool also hearing it from multiple perspectives like that. Okay. Uh, this thing is way too dark. Is there a ultra lamp? Perfect. Yeah, that should light up the joint a little bit. It would be wise to make sure there are enough facilities to service those aboard, Supervisor. Keep a close eye on your facilities and build more if you see they're being overused. Okay. Well, we have a Lavatron that's unoccupied, we have a, a complete berth that's unoccupied, and a Dynomat that's not being used. Coming over here, the Lavatron seems a little heavy, but we have another one, so they should be able to flock towards that one. Realistically, if I knew that the corridor was going to open this way, I would have put the port more on this side to make it more centralized, but... Not much I can do about that at the moment. Now I'm also just looking around for litter. Here, litter, litter, litter. I got it! Nope! Aww. Litter. The recycler is really nice. Um, if ever you're in a real energy pinch and you just really need some resources, you can actually break down some of your structures. The way it works is, if you break them down, they'll be—you just get the hard plant crate again. So you don't really get money back, but it allows you to get a small refund out of it. Oh, here's Val again. Excuse my interruption, but I have new orders from the Grulian Workers Party Secretary. You are to expand the way station into a communications relay post. I assure the GWP that you're capable of this. I hope this faith in you is not misplaced. Otherwise, we'll both be visiting the labor exchange on Prodar 6. Okay. Hoping for a hard plan or a way for me to buy a communications... Oh, gray right. travelers have also been granted access to the station. How delightful. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Grays are excellent. They're fantastic medics. So the salt hogs are great industrial workers, they'll work in the factories and the recyclers. The greys are going to be great as, um, well, doctors. So it's good to have them on board. The GWP have dispatched a number of TARG communication experts to your station. Whilst members of the TARG make good workers, don't be fooled by their insectile nature. 
The Targ are a proud race. They would say haughty and aloof. The rest of us say miserable. Your task is to keep your Targ employees happy. Keeping employees content is an unwelcome but necessary part of every supervisor's role. Who knows? One day you may even make me happy. Val, I met you for like 20 minutes here. Your expectations are insane. The new TARG employees need looking after, Supervisor. Remember, they're an entirely different race. Ensure your facilities can accommodate them comfortably. I think we're still looking good on facilities. That's true that they're a completely different race. So these are the TARG, and you can see... Oh, hang on. So they're having a conversation with each other, and they're laughing. They're having a good time. Depending on how some races talk to other races, they'll either be unaffected, offended, or uh, approachable or acceptable. And their attitudes will change throughout. So someone that has a really rough conversation is going to need some sort of leisure activities to kind of lift their spirits. And there's everything in this game. Everything they eat, they do, they sleep. Each race is affected differently. Uh -oh. The new TARG employees need looking yeah, after supervisor. Two hard plan crates have been provided. From these you may build two comm sensors. After all, if you want to expand, you must communicate with the outside universe. That's an old Gruelian cliche, if you must know. No, I totally didn't. <clears throat> That's okay, though. All right, commencers. These are awesome. These will allow us, as he said, to communicate with the outside world and, more importantly, do some proper trading. Can I? No, I can't. Yeah, that's okay. We still have a good amount of space if we need to build a factory or other facilities. We're still doing okay. I'm not too worried. So now that we already have some employees, these these little guys, let's just get a good look at one of them, the Targ. Yeah, insectoid as mentioned, but proud, so that's good. These are the guys that are going to work the commensers. Com sensor. Commenser? <laughs> right. So once that starts kicking off, we should start to hear from Arona more often and other traders. I apologize for tearing you from your presumably vital work, but an emergency message is arriving via the ComSensor channels. Ooh, a VIP diplomat is critically ill on board requesting me to docking. Absolutely. So the problem is we don't have a sick bay. I hope they'll help me take care of that. Okay, so it's good we have the greys on board. Ooh, our first monk. Uh, hopefully we'll get to them later, uh, right now. You know, we could cure that ailing diplomat if only we had a sick bay. What course of action should we take? Give me the hard plan. You are clearly a supervisor <laughs> of great ability. I have something you might like. I never offer this to anyone else, but I have a nearly new sick bay. Nearly new. <laughs> it's yours if you want it. I never thought I'd sell it as it was a gift from four of my mothers. But I like your face, so it's yours if you're interested. Oh, he likes my face. Give me that sick bay, you old lug. Uh, yes. Plant. Use. And let's see. Let's keep this close to the port. So I say something like... Let's do that. Uh, let's see. Diagnosis unit. One. Two. Three and the four. Come on. Nope. And then some doors. Boop. Boop. Great. Now we need to hire some greys, I'm sure. We have a problem. Our diplomat is very under the weather. And there is little we can do at the moment. All I can suggest is turning to religion at this point. Ouch. <laughs> now I'm sure I'll be given orders to hire greys once the sick bay is complete, so I'm going to let Val lead us a bit here. I don't want to get too far ahead or I'll spend all our resources. There we go, very good. We have a sick bay. Now we need a grey alien to operate it. Find one and hire him immediately. There's no time to lose if we're to save the ailing diplomat. Now the same thing goes here with the greys. Everything, skill, dedication, and loyalty. It's very important that whoever you hire has a good skill level, and I really try to keep it above two stars for the greys. 
If you don't have someone who's skilled, the big problem is what can happen. They could give a poor diagnosis or even cause harm. So it's more important that the skill is really high, above the loyalty at least. Um, the dedication was really high on this one, so I'm happy with that as well. Um, no, I didn't want to talk to you, I wanted the litter. Give me the litter! Well, go get a sandwich! You have facilities. Great, so we have two greys. Uh, let's see, are there any that are decent whatsoever? Not. Not really. Okay, still looking pretty good here. Hopefully that VIP comes on... Oh, was it the monk? I wonder if it was the monk. Oh, it was the monk. How about that? So you can kind of see if you get a good look on him. He's got the purple splotches. Also, each alien race is weak and resistant to several ailments. So this one in particular might... I mean, it's only for the story mode, but some of them are actually weak to certain ones. Uh, there's even, like, the common cold, and there's all the these... Oh. Bay supervisor, the diplomat who arrived on the Zedum shuttle Surundai has made a full recovery. Apparently, he drank some bad mucus wine. You, it seems, ought to be congratulated on your handling of this delicate incident. Let's see, who was selling some vintage mucus wine? Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> okay, episode one, mission one in the books. Thanks for joining me, guys, for Startopia, and I'll see you next time.